What's up, everybody? Tyson Roush, let's talk Jets. Hope everybody's having an excellent week. NFL draft round one has begun, and it is so interesting. All the hype heading into the draft, and all the rumors, and all those smoke screens, and how many potential trades could happen in the top six picks, and all that. And as the draft plays out, common sense kicked in, and it went as it was supposed to be, right? So I think the, the turning point for me was at pick four, where would the Cardinals take Marvin Harrison Jr., or would they trade back? They took him, and then you're like, well, that was kind of like your, that was your pipe dream, right? That was like, you want to get the best receiver in the class, you don't get him. At five, the Chargers take all, which you're like, that was kind of an area, maybe a team would trade up to get a quarterback. The Chargers say, you know what, we want a freaking great offensive lineman, we're going to take it. Then at six was kind of the pivot point, where if the Giants took a quarterback there, then you see Malik Neighbors maybe fall a little bit, the Jets could get aggressive. The Giants, in my opinion, did the right thing, they took Neighbors, and then you're trying to figure out where is Rome going to fall to? Because to me, the Jets went into the draft where it's like you want to get, you know, either great offensive lineman or I was, I'm really big on getting a weapon. And then you have your top three receivers, Rome being your third one, and he's falling a little bit. So you're like, well, Rome fall to 10. I will honestly say that at when the, at the ninth pick, when the Bears were there at nine, I'm like, well, the Bears probably go defense here. That's kind of what I was thinking. But if you're the Jets, if I was the Jets, I probably would have traded up that one spot to get Rome and get a, get a wide receiver. When that did not happen, at 10, I was like, all right. The, to me, the whole Bowers thing was never going to happen. When there's that much smoke around one player where it's like, oh, the Jets are interested, the Jets are interested, it's always the opposite, right? So I, I just didn't I didn't think the whole Bowers thing was going to happen. So Joe Douglas did a smart thing. He traded back one spot. He gained a fourth round and a fifth round pick. He a later pick. But you get a fourth and fifth rounder. You only move him back one spot. And they knew they were going to get the same player that they were going to get a 10. So they move back one spot. You get, you know, you get compensation for it, which is great. And then they take Olu Fashionu, which is interesting because I knew the reactions were going to be crazy all over the place. But they had the Bowers fan base, which is like a cult at this point. But it's like, I think it's a really smart sound move. And here's the reason why. The Jets offensive line, as we all know by now, Tyron Smith is old. He normally, you, the expectation, if we're being reasonable, he's probably going to miss three or four games. But he's, he's at the tail end of his career. So you look at him, Morgan Moses coming off peck injury. He's kind of banged up. You need offensive line help. So what you do is you get a left tackle that is not forced into action right away, which is a good thing. He's getting time to be groomed by one of all-time great left tackles. He has mentors in Morgan Moses and Tyron Smith, which is phenomenal. He's probably going to play this year, but he's not going to be rushed into action. So what you're getting is you're getting a very good depth backup, depth backup left tackle now for this year, and you're getting your starting left tackle for the foreseeable future. How can you be mad at that? To me, it's a solid, sound, quality move. Now, I understand the Jets are in a win-now year, but you know what? God forbid Tyron Smith gets hurt, you have your win-now move. So my question is, like, you have a, a kid that's 21 years old, a very good pass protector, who he's, at the, he's just not even scratching the surface of his, of his ability. You have him. Would you rather have him or David Bakhtiari, who's coming up all kinds of injuries? You don't even know what you're going to get at him, right? So to me, it's like it's a it's a quality backup right now, and then he's a long term answer at left tackle. Left tackles are hard to come by, man. We know as Jet fans, we know this. Look at what we've been through with Beckton and Dwayne Brown and all with all these other guys. We went through all names at this point. So if you can get your next to Brickashaw Ferguson here at 11, how can you be mad about it? Now I will say this. Now, with there is a void, and when all the overreactions right now, to me, it's like you don't overreact in day one of the draft. That's similar to overreacting in day one of free agency. Day one of free agency, oh, Joe Douglas is terrible, he sucks, all these different things. Four days later, Joe Douglas is great, give this guy an extension. you got to let the entire draft play out. And the reason why I say that, the Jets now, they added a fourth and fifth round pick. They have the ability to move up into the second round and get a wide receiver. They have the ability to, you know, draft receivers. They can also sign receivers as well. You have, you know, your Beckhams, Tyler Boyd still out there. There's all these IUK rumors about he could be traded. Who knows what's going on with Cortland Sutton? There are other ways to do it. So before you you thrash Joe Douglas for the team not having any weapons, they can still add them. So for me, it's like I wait till the entire draft's over and then the signings after, and then you evaluate this team as they're ready going into training camp, not on friggin' April 25th. So to me, I give the Jets credit. It was a need. Offensive tackle was a need on this team. Desperately needed. Now, the one thing I won't do is I wouldn't move Olu around. I wouldn't move him like he could play guard, he could play this, he could play that. No. You put him at left tackle and say become a master of your craft. And this is where you're going to be. 
and let them just flourish. So, uh, I mean, we'll, let me know what you guys think. I saw the Bowers comments. I jumped on Ian's stream for a little while, and I saw all the like, fans were booing at the draft and this and that. Listen, young, quality, offensive lineman that could be a, like a long-term anchor for your team. You can't get mad at it, man. It's a smart, sound football decision, especially when the top three receivers are gone. And if you're not really interested in Bowers, what do you, you don't want to reach. You want to get quality. He got a quality offensive lineman. He added a couple picks, and then you move on from it. So I'm happy with it. I'm not mad. You know, I'm, I'm saying I desperately want playmakers, but I understand his decision. It's sound with me, and I'm cool. So have a good day.